Hello and welcome. In today's class, I'll be discussing how we can write a Java program to rotate a matrix anti-clockwise by 270 degrees. So here is the diagram where initially we have the original matrix of order 3 by 4 and when you rotate it anti-clockwise by 90 degrees, this is the new arrangement that we get. On rotating it further by 90 degrees anti-clockwise, we get this arrangement. And rotating it for the third time anti-clockwise 90 degrees, we get this arrangement. So all total 90, 90 and 90, it's coming to 270 degrees. So this should be the final result of our matrix. Now, if you compare this with the original matrix, you will notice that the last row becomes the first column. Then the second last row becomes the second column. And then the third last row becomes the third column in the resulting matrix. So this is the idea here. We have to pick elements from the last row and place it in the first column of the new matrix. Also notice that in the new matrix, the order has changed uh, here in the original matrix, if you see, we have three rows and four columns, but in the resulting matrix, we have four rows and three columns. So the order of the matrix has also changed. So once it's clear how we are going to rotate the matrix 270 degrees anti-clockwise, let's now write the program. So first of all, we'll create a file in our home folder and I will name it rotate.java we start with the import statement we import the scanner class this will be used for user input the class name will be rotate only because the file name and the class name should be the same then we create the main function We keep the scanner object ready. And now we input the number of rows and columns required for the matrix. Similarly, we input the number of columns. Once the number of rows and columns are taken, we have to check whether the values of M and N are in a valid range because according to the question, both row and column should be greater than 2 and less than 10. So let's verify that. So in case m is uh, less than 3 or n is less than 3 or m is greater than 9 or n is greater than 9 then we print invalid input and we call the return keyword. So if the range is not valid for M or N, then this error message will be displayed and we will exit from main because we have called the return keyword. So because we are inside the main function, we will exit from main and as a result, the program will stop. Otherwise, we proceed further and we create the arrays. This is the first matrix, the original matrix. And this is the resultant matrix. 
So let's give a comment here. Now, we also take one variable called sum and set it to zero because according to the question, we have to find the sum of all the odd elements in the matrix. So for that, we are taking one accumulator sum. Now it's time to input the elements into the matrix. So let's give a heading message. enter elements and now we write a nested loop to input elements into the matrix. Once we have taken the value, the individual values from the user for the matrix, we can check whether it is odd or not. And accordingly, we can add that value to the sum variable. So we can give the if condition here itself. So if aij is, uh, if, you, if you do modulus 2, if it's not equal to 0, that means it's not divisible by 2. And so in that case, we can say that it's an odd number. And so sum plus is equal to a i j. So in this nested loop, we are inputting elements into the matrix. At the same time, we are also finding the sum of the odd elements. Now it's time to print the original matrix. So again, we give a heading message. original matrix and let's create a function called display that will display the matrix so we are passing the original matrix a so automatically this function is going to receive that matrix and display the matrix so let's write that function We will require the same nested loop here. But instead of inputting, we will print. And once a complete row is printed, we change the line using println. After displaying the original matrix, it's time to rotate the matrix. So I will take Q is equal to zero. This will be the index of column for matrix B. And I is the index of row for column A. And we know that we are going to start from the last row. We are going to pick elements from the last row. That's why I is starting from the last index and going up to the first index, which is zero. And here we take P as zero. This will be the index of row for matrix. B. So for j equals 0, j less than n, j plus plus.
and here in B of P Q we will store A I J and after that P increases by 1. Once the inner loop is complete we increment Q and this is the code for rotating the matrix by 270 degrees. So we are starting from the last row going till the first row and each time we are picking elements from each and every row and storing it in the column. So the column remains constant while the row changes, P changes. So this way column wise we are storing the elements. Once this is done we have to display the rotated matrix also. So again we give a heading message rotated matrix 270 degrees anti-clockwise and again we can call the display function and we can pass B this time. Now here we need to know the value of M and N so that's why that's why we need to pass these two variables also. So in the second matrix we will pass n comma m whereas in the first matrix we will pass m and then n. And why I created a function here because we are displaying the matrix twice. Firstly we are displaying the original matrix then I am displaying the rotated matrix. So instead of writing the same code twice we can use a function and we can reuse the same code. So that's the program and we also have to display finally the sum of the odd elements. So over here we can write sum of the odd elements is sum and now our program is complete. So let's check the output. So let's give m as 3, n as 4 and let's enter the elements 8, 7, 9, 3, minus 2, 0. 4, 5, 1, 3, 6, minus 4 and we can see over here that this is our original matrix and this is our rotated matrix. You can notice that the last row has become the first column, the second last row becomes the second column and the third last row becomes the third column. Also, the sum of the odd elements is 28. So if you add up all the odd elements, you will see that the sum is 28. Also, if you give invalid range for M or N, let's say 2 and 3, you will see that it will print invalid input because it is not a valid range for M and N. So that's all in this class. I hope you have understood how to rotate a matrix anti-clockwise by 270 degrees. See you in the next class and thanks for watching.